We've been joined by Chris Kende Wandu for Off the Press. Chris, it's good to have you join us this morning. Compliment of the season. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Good morning. And Merry Christmas in advance. It's all right, then. Uh, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. Naira depreciates and adds 9 trillion Naira to foreign debt burden. <laughs> That's a lot. We need to do something. I mean, we just wake up and there's a lot to deal with as a country. As local currency weakens by 53%, external debt increases by 288%. Mm, 53 is a pass mark. Nigeria needs strong, productive economy, says economist. And we couldn't agree less. Tunibu takes campaign to the United Kingdom. Atiku train storms Lagos. And then, you know, there was a video... <laughs> Yeah, the Chatham House where Kofi was actually talking about that, you, you know, so <laughs> I'm sure that our guest would be uh, ready, you know, to answer all of the questions this morning and share his thoughts. Atiku appeals to Lagos voters. Tunibu accuses opponents of playing dirty politics. Quite interesting. And federal government not ready to fund varsities. That's what asked this quarter to say. Again, you find Nigerian projects 1.8 or projects 1.8 million Barrels production uh, in May 2023. I hope that we've been able to solve the issue of, you know, theft and what have you, uh, all of that pipeline vandalism and others. Nigerians with NIN increased to 92 million, uh, 92 million all theft. Navy denies blaming NNPC, but really, it was very explicit. And you have Abuja Kaduna train records low passenger turnout, but you wouldn't blame the people. That's the much we can take this morning on the Punch newspaper. All right, let's uh, go to the next paper. Some very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, 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 <laughs> stories there. Uh, the next one I think we'll look at is the is the nation. Indeed, uh, terrible points the way forward on power security others is a big one there. Chatham House hosts APC candidate uh, Erufai Wale Edun, Bajabiamida Ayade Alake, a better Edu speak. Uh, quite interesting, Koshiva said had two people speak. Very interesting indeed. Uh, Wiki attacks Dogara for backing a ticket. Of course, uh, the man has jumped from the APC uh, to the PDP. Ex speaker fires back, ex VP. Uh, can see Buhari's achievements as government. Uh, more from the paper, Tiku. I'll sell off refineries, raise ten billion dollars for SMEs. All right, how will that uh, work? Um, I guess will give us his thoughts. All theft. We didn't indict NNPCL, says Navy. Uh, Messi Zan will be ready yesterday. Uh, why at his every election by Governor Somolu? He was in London. Uh, Kedulu presents 272.73 billion naira. Uh, budget. Um, 130 billion naira Sukuk loan to fix federal roads. Quite interesting one. Uh, but uh, the the picture on the front page, Messi and uh, Chris Kane, one, the picture on the front page of uh, the uh, the punch, uh, the, the story Messi talked about earlier, uh, looking at the Abuja Kaduna train recording low passenger turn. It reminds me of this uh, line from Fela's song where he said, uh, I know one guy, I know one die. You know that song, right? No. Why not? <laughs> I'm a huge fan. But he wants to go. Mercy, over to you. All right, let's turn attention to another paper this morning. It's a Daily Trust newspaper. And uh, we'll just look at a few headlines before we move to the other one. Now, now on the Daily Trust newspaper, Atiku, I beg your pardon, Tunibu takes campaign to the United Kingdom. Atiku was Lagos voters, quite similar with what you have on the Punch newspaper. How. I'll tackle insecurity, energy crisis, ex-governor is quoted to say. Records of my background, age and education is consistent. I'll sell refineries to raise $10 billion employment fund. That's what the PDP candidate, of course, Atiku has always wanted to sell, you know, the refineries. We're ordained to end Tunibu's dynasty in Lagos. I love the word dynasty. Uh, Jandor is quoted to say. Now we'll move away from the board caption. You have another federal government orders redeployment of prison officers who cannot shoot to kill. Oh, really? Bandits kill three policemen. Orders in Sokoto protect our facilities. INEC begs Nigerians. 
four nabbed as APC PDP clash over uh, billboards in Quara, but there's also another clash, you know, in the United Kingdom. Just like we just take our wahala and go outside and export it. <laughs> That's the much we can take on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Interesting. Let's go to the final port. Uh, seven years after Buhari, after Buhari falters on 24 million jobs promise. This paper doing uh, uh, an investigative one there. Uh, maybe something that people may have forgotten about. And you can see a picture of uh, Nigerians at the Abuja Stadium, uh, Moshida Biola Stadium, Abuja. Uh, uh, applying for jobs. I think this should be when uh, Good Luck Jonathan was president, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where you had, uh, this in 2014, where you had a, a stampede. I think Abba Moro was uh, Minister of Interior at the time. Uh, the writer to that headline, NBS fails to release unemployment rates since 2020. That's Nigeria Bureau of Statistics. That's very worrying. I, I try to remember when Yemi Kali left that, uh, that seat as the head of the uh, Nigeria Bureau, National Bureau of Statistics. Ngige's claim of 7 million jobs created unlikely, uh, NDP, 2021 to 2025, uh, to create 30 million jobs in Mirage, says on Yerinde. No honeymoon for who will take over from Buhari or Joe. Uh, it will require three governments to clean up this administration's mess, uh, is what the, another writer had quoting someone is saying. And insecurity, COVID-19, others undermine efforts to lift 100 million out of poverty so um it's a focus by the paper on unemployment and poverty uh, in the country interesting one there fg decries opposition's downplaying of buhari's achievements i'm ready to lead nigeria tilibu says at chatham house i'll read that again uh i'm ready to lead nigeria tilibu says at chatham house nigeria morocco gas pipeline nnpc signs mou uh, with Ghana, the Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, uh, oil companies from these uh, countries. Uh, INEC blasts, oh sorry, INEC elections can't be conducted in an atmosphere of violence. And election not a priority now as a nation, says Emmanuel. The final one from there will fire back if Atiku boys attack G5 governors again. WK wants. We'll fire back if Atiku boys attack G5 governors again at this point let's bring in <laughs> chris kende wandu uh, for his analysis let's start with that story on the front page of the guardian chris um i'm ready to lead nigeria tinubu says at chatham house and um, it sounds like a paradox that he had to go to chatham house to say he's ready to lead nigeria but i think he can be, be forgiven because he had actually already said these in the country already but some are wondering why uh he's gone to london to face uh, open questions from the public and an event not organized by his campaign team or in collaboration with his campaign team. There's a public forum, almost like a town hall. Um, I, has he done anything wrong by not opening himself up to the press here? He, he says, you know, we, the media in Nigeria, want to use him to make money. That's why he's not been granted interviews. Over to you, Chris Kende Wando. Yeah, um, it's quite unfortunate that um our people believe in everything for it, um, including our leaders. When any of them fall sick, instead of looking for a local hospital here, they will they travel to London or US for treatment. If they want to spend their holiday, they, they go abroad instead of going to Okutu, Tato Ranch, or Jaws, or any of these uh, uh, tourist centers in Nigeria. So, we love foreign, and what, that is what has taken us to where we are presently. We don't have a single product to export again. Even our oil that we're supposed to be exporting, we're having an issue with it, uh, with the number of tests and rest of them. And our debt profile continues to rise. It's also one of the papers saying that Nigeria's uh, debt profile has reached to about 9 trillion because of the creation of the, uh, of the Naira. But bringing it back home to um, Tinubu, um, attendance at um, Chatham House. Um, and I continue to ask, what is this crazy about Chatham House? Um, we have here in Nigeria, the Nigeria, uh, Nigeria Institute of Internal Affairs, NIIA. That, uh, um, that organization has been rendered useless. I used to remember in those days of uh, Professor Izzy Ogunson, I can't remember his name now, I'm sure it's late. When I, NIIA became the epitome of our foreign policies, where 
our leaders go to martial arts, their manifesto, ten Nigerians what they're going to do about international uh, relations, affairs, and rest of them. That has been used. It used to be somewhere in Kopa Biomi in Victoria. I don't know whether I'm still there. It's been years I've had about and I. But you see our people every day killing themselves to go to Chatham House. And I continue to ask, there is nothing like the diaspora voting in 2023. Those that are going to vote for these presidential candidates are candidates. So if you say you are going to Chatham House, what message are you going to tell Nigerians? They organize town hall debates in Nigeria you don't attend. They invite you to uh, professional bodies, uh, uh, meetings for you to be able to ventilate your ideas. We don't attend. Then every single time we jump to and run to. But um, it is left for Nigerians. Um, and I've said it time with that, especially at regards to the presidential candidate of the APC. APC is taking Nigerians for granted, whether we like it or not. I'm not just talking as a, a, a media person, but also as a Nigerian. A situation where you are invited to tell Nigerians what to do for Nigerians, you, you refuse to come. And you say you are campaigning, you are going to so, so place and rest of it. It's within your right. But if I'm going to hire you for a job, then I must be able to get you interview so that I can know whether you have the capacity to be able to do the job you are asked to do. But uh Ashwaju Bola meant to the book and his uh, uh and his team don't, don't seem to understand that or they just feel that it was not necessary for him to speak to Nigerians or Nigerian me. Um let's wait and see in 2023. But if you look at what uh, transpired at the Chatham House uh, yesterday, yes, he was going to clarify certain issues, including his debt, his academics, and the rest of them. He said now how the certificate uh, from the University of Chicago, uh, is that there's no question about his birth and his parentage. And then when questions were thrown at him after he was open, he threw it at some of those that went with him, Erufai, uh, Ayade, and the rest of them. And the question I asked, is Erufai going to be the president of Nigeria? Is Ayade going to be the president of Nigeria? Is Edu going to be the president of Nigeria? We want to hear from the man that is going to be at the saddle of affairs. Because based on that, we're taking from his words. There were so many promises in 2015 by the APC and their presidential candidate, as well as their presidential campaign. At the end of it, what they say, where when they fought that and we asked this is what they said, they say, no, we didn't say so bring video evidence. So if tomorrow some of the things that Erufai or Ayade or whatever um, said um, um, come to the vote, I book and deny, he never said, he said that it was said by one of my aides or those that followed me. So those are the issues. But he has attended the Chatham House. Don't forget also that were pro and, um, pro and uh, those that were against uh, uh, Tinubu's protest yesterday are also at Chatham House. But it's becoming more like a circus. And uh, we are here as the media to give Nigerians all the necessary details. But it's come 2023, Nigerians will make up their minds. Right, I Chris. next said there's no going back on this. Chris, let's take a look at the punch now. The punch talks about Naira depreciation and the fact that it has added 9 trillion Naira to our foreign debt burden. Now, recently, the Minister of Finance was saying clearly that Nigeria is not broke and that we're repaying our loans. However, there's also the fact that our external debt has increased by 288%, of course, uh, the local currency. So with all of this, uh, are we still not broke or are we about not to be broke? What's going on? What are your thoughts? I just look at the finance minister as the ostrich that buried his head on the sound, where the rest of his body is posed. Um, you can also Nigeria is not broke, and we're having this level of uh, debt profile, 9 trillion. Um, that is just part of what we have. From what we've had, we have a day profile of close to over 30 trillion currently, and it may even be more. We are not even paying the debt. What we are doing, we are paying presently are the interest on debt. And if we continue like this, essentially, we do need to. We are not exporting enough. Our crude oil, we are not making much from it. We are not tapping into other areas like uh, natural minerals, and um, that Nigeria is. Uh, uh, well, we, we have in abundance. They are not looking at that area. So all we just do is want to export uh, crude oil. Even the prices of crude oil is uh, it, 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 it is not helping matters. In as much as it's going, but Nigeria is having serious um, export deficit. We can't even meet our OPEC uh, 
um, quota that's giving us uh, the liquefied natural gas that's supposed to be yielding us so much, especially now that Ukraine and um, Russia is at war. We are not doing much about it. Look at every part of Nigeria now. You have Nigerians skilled for hours to buy fuel. A country that is so full in abundance of crude oil, well, we still um, go around having issue of uh, petroleum because we, none of our refinery is working. We are, promises we are made in 2050 that all will be revived and more, many more will be built. Not a single refinery has been built. So, if the finance minister continues to say that we are we are not broke, well, um, I, I don't know what to say. This is not the first time they are saying it. After all, this same administration told us um, some months back that um, they were through his uh, Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, which has become a country pipe, as far as I'm concerned, to siphon money that they were be, um, feeding our children who were at home with us during the COVID, and uh, nobody asked any question about it. So any of them can come out and say anything, but the reality is not uh, pointing to that direction. So, so, so then what's the significance of the redesign of the Naira in all of that? I mean, uh, a lot of pundits have said that it would uh, mean a, a lot of positive or bring a lot of posi positive economic benefits. Um, does that also include, you know, strengthening the, the value of the Naira? Well, you cannot say um, the effect of the redesigned Naira now until it comes into circulation. It will come into circulation until the 15th of December. So it is then that we know the effect, whether it will make any level of impact or not. Um, don't forget that the, what the CBN is doing now is to mop up um, the old Naira notes that is in so many wrong hands. And they feel that by so doing, um, when it introduces the new Naira, that it's going to have some economic effects on the, in the, on the Naira itself. But I really doubt that, as it were. The Naira cannot appreciate uh, because we are not doing what we need to do. Once you remain a, an import-dependent country, there is no way your currency is going to appreciate. There is no, it's not even possible. How are you going to do that? So, on to be able to export more and be able to make more foreign exchange, especially dollars and um, uh, pounds and euros, there, there's, there's not going to be any level of... There's, uh, even... Um, Chico B or whoever the best of a mathematician or economists cannot say anything to the contrary. The best way we can be able to appreciate this Naira is making sure that we'll be able to export more and earn more foreign exchange. All right, let's look at the apathy um, as uh, you know shown um, on the front page of the Punch. Uh, Abuja Kaduna train records low pass passenger turnout. Uh, like I said, you know, quoting the lyrics of Fela's song where he said, uh, everybody, run, 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 everybody scatter, scatter, you know. And he says, we no one die, we no one quench. Nobody wants to, to, to be the one that the federal government will use to test whether it's safe to travel on that route. <laughs> well, what do you say about this? Is it too early to have opened the services? And will you uh, be encouraging people to get on that, uh, on that train just yet? Well, if you that, but you, you go enter the train. You go enter. I did ask you, sir. I did ask you. I know, me, no, man, I did throw him back to you. You, no. you go enter. Me, I, I don't catch uh, the ball. I don't throw him back to you. You did wind me. You did wind me. But on the most on the most serious note, it will be that be as, that is expected. There will be that level of apathy uh, on the part of uh, passengers. Copy message um, also take uh, put into context. Whenever you heard that there was a, a, a plane crash in Nigeria, you will see that in the next two weeks or three weeks, you'll be so you'll be so afraid to fly any fly in Nigeria. You would rather take it not for this level of insecurity. You would rather go by route from here to Medjugorje rather than taking and it is. In fact, the airlines that are affected, you'll be shocked that nobody wants to. You remember what happened with uh, what's that uh, what that flight? Dana Air. Uh, Dana 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 Air. For months, people refused to fly Dana Air. I'll give you a classical example. Um, I was, it was just the act of God that I missed the Sosoliso flight that killed several uh, students of Loyola University, um, Pastor Bimbo, and the rest of them. Um, I was to fly, I was booked for that flight from Abuja to Lagos, where that flight was supposed to um, go en route to um, Port Harcourt and to Lagos. Unfortunately, I got there, I was already booked. But the airline 
for whatever reason, had a bulk purchase, a booking from that school. Over close to about 80 students from that school came. And those of us that already booked for that flight decided to refund us our money. And because um, that flight, they are having more uh, passengers on that social so flight. That was how I missed that flight. And less than one hour after that flight took off, it crashed. Probably I wouldn't have been talking to you today if not for the grace of God. But the effects of that crash affected me for close to two, three months. I refused to fly in Nigeria. So it's the same thing that is happening with the Ambuja route. It takes some time, confidence will be built, and the people will start going on that uh, train. But what I still believe, and I hope, that enough security will be put in place so that lightning will not strike a second time on that route. That's a very chilling uh, 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 in revelation by you, Chris Kendewandu. Just before Messi comes in, I remember one day I had to fly, I think just after that uh, crash, I flew down and someone asked me, are you okay? <laughs> you know, don't you love your life? Uh, but it's just a normal human human reaction. We'll see. Very, very chilling in you know, revelation by you. Very, very, very touching. All right, then. Thank you, buddy. Well, let's move away from that and look at uh, the oil projection for 2023. Uh, Nigeria projects 1.8 million barrels in terms of uh, crude. What do you make of this, especially looking at the setback for us in 2022? We haven't been able to, you know, meet the uh, OPEC quota so far. And also, uh, there's also been issue of oil thefts. There's also issues of not being able to export, you know, the product through the export channel for whatever excuses has been going on. What are your thoughts? Yes, yeah, as, long as, as long as our security agencies, as well as the um, staff of NNPC, those in the Ministry of Petroleum continue to, um, they will continue with the conspiracy theory of oil theft. We can never meet that. Now, what are we doing? We are hiring individuals like Apollo to, uh, to marshal out and be able to protect. Mercy, Kofi, you remember there was a video that went viral some months back where we were shown, um, what is it, is in the UAE, Dubai, or one of these, um, or I think, okay, Saudi Arabia, I can't remember which of the countries in the, the Far East, where from just the room, from room, from their control room, they can see how the, uh, um, the uh, oil movement on the pipelines until it gets to where it is pumped into the, the state. No single drop of uh, one barrel of oil will be stolen or was stolen or is being stolen in those countries because everything has been digitalized and it can be seen we have the capacity to do that from here and be able to make sure that we're able to monitor what is going on but corruption will not allow them a situation where you see a ship a very very mighty ship anchor somewhere in the gulf of guinea and we have feeder um, ships uh, coming in into our creeks to uh, pump over 300 million uh, or is it uh, three million barrels of oil into that ship. That, that ship has been re retrieved from um, the Equatorial Guinea. To that. that is just one out of so many. So until we do the need, we don't know what to do for us to be able to meet our quota. But in a situation where we're losing, losing over 400,000 barrels of crude oil every day to uh, oil itself, that's not we're going to meet our quota. So irrespective of whatever anybody's projecting, it's just a total fallacy. Yeah. Security agencies know what to do. NNPC know what to do. Nigerian government know what to do in order to stem the tide. All right. Uh, curious, Kendi, what an interesting, uh, uh, you know, analysis by you. Um, and uh, we'll leave it at that for now. And, of course, I uh, look forward to having you again next week. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day. All right. Thank you. Chris Kendiwando is a chartered mediator and consulator. He's been a guest on After Press. Uh, we have uh, some more discussions ahead. Mercy? Definitely. We'll take a break. And when we return, it will be time for us to delve into it. Please stay with us.